Christmas, everybody. Listen, I made a special trip down to Austin to let you know about our upcoming Breakfast with Santa on December the 12th. This year, it's going to be virtual. I am so disappointed I can't be here with you in person, but I will be here at our virtual Breakfast with Santa on December 12th. I will be here. I will give you a very special message from Santa's workshop, from the reindeer, and from all the elves. So I look forward to seeing you and your parents on December the 12th. Welcome to worship here at Hope Presbyterian Church, where we invite all to worship God, to grow in faith, and to follow Jesus by serving others. My name is Josh Robinson. I'm the senior pastor here at the church. And on behalf of our associate pastor, Joel Moody, our elders, our deacons, and our staff, we are so delighted that you would join us for worship this morning. We would invite you to register your attendance with us by going to hopeaustin.org connect where there is an online form where you can share information with us as well as to request information from us. We would love to start a relationship with you and to get to know you better. And if there's anything that you would like, such as grabbing some virtual coffee, we would love to set that up as well. At Hope, we are a praying church. So if you have any prayer requests, whether joys or concerns, you can go to hopeaustin.org prayer. And there is an online form that will send us your prayer request. You can have it go just to the pastors, to the deacons, or to be included in our weekly prayer email. Please let us know how we can best pray for you. And we are also a giving church. We respond to the good news of God's love by emptying out our lives of our time, our talent, and our money. So if you would like to join us in our generous sharing of our financial gifts, please go to hopeaustin.org slash donate. There's a secure online form with more, uh, more information and ways for you to join us in uh, our shared ministries together. If you'd prefer, you may send a check to uh, Hope Presbyterian Church, 11512 Olson Drive, Austin, Texas, 78750. We thank you for your continued and sustained support of all that we do here at Hope Presbyterian. Before we get started with worship today, one of the ways I want to share that one of the ways in which we live out our faith is in that second line of our mission statement, grow in faith. And I'd like to invite Joel Moody, our associate pastor for Christian education, to come forward for the last 11 months, Joel has been doing a program called the 5 by 5 by 5 He's done five chapters of the New Testament, one per day, for, with a five-minute video every day for the last several months. And it has been a labor of love. He has had the opportunity. Get over here. He's had the opportunity to quit because it is too much. And his discipleship and his devotion and dedication to participating and growing in the faith of this community has been uh, unending, unwavering. And we thank you for that. We recognize you not with an award, but with a, a simple recognition, a token of our appreciation for all that you've done. God bless you. We thank you for all the Bible studies you've been preparing, but especially we know how much you have invested in this daily discipleship path that you have set out for the community. So uh, thank you. Be on the lookout in the new year. I'm sure he's cooking up something else that uh, will invite us all to grow in faith. Sisters, brothers, siblings in the family of Christ, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice. Let us be glad in it. Let us prepare our hearts to worship God.
please rise as you are able in body or spirit and let us join together in our call to worship using the words printed on the screen. We come for God gathers us here into a community called faith where the hungry are served first, where the thirsty drink life's water. We come for God welcomes us here into a home called grace where the naked are clothed in robes of hope, where the stranger is embraced as the long lost prodigal. We come for God reunites us here into a family called love, where the imprisoned are remembered, where the sick are cradled in God's peace. Sisters, brothers, siblings in the family of Christ, let us worship God. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Friends, God loves us so much that God calls us children of God. When we see God face to face, we will resemble our Lord. And so in anticipation of that day, we come before God and we confess our sin, seeking to repent and to be reshaped into a closer image of the one we follow and worship. So let us pray using the words on the screen. God of glory, we do not always see your glory in the world around us. When we see a person in need, it is not easy to look him in the eye. When we hear a cry for help, it is not easy to offer her quick assistance. When we know of a lonely prisoner, it is not easy to make that visit. Forgive us when we fail to see you in our everyday lives. Forgive us when we are afraid to act, afraid to care. Forgive us, God of grace.
we continue. Forgive us, God of grace. Encourage us, God of glory. Help us see others with the eyes of compassion that we might be your loving presence in the world. Amen. Friends, listen and hear the sound of God's love being poured out for you. You may taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy is everyone who takes refuge in the Lord. So fear the Lord, God's holy ones. For those who fear God have no want. Friends, hear and believe the good news of the gospel. In, in Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ we are, we are forgiven. forgiven. Glory to God, whose goodness shines on me, and to the Son, whose grace has set me free, and to the Spirit, whose love has set me free, as it was in the beginning, is now and never shall be. Christ. So in the same way, let us pass the peace of Christ to one another. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all and, and also, also with you. And as we pass the peace today, find something concrete you can do to show your love to a sibling in Christ. Whether it's a comment, a phone call, a letter, or, or a socially distanced visit, commit to sharing some concrete sign of peace with a fellow believer this week. Good morning, boys and girls. It's so good to see you through the screen today. You'll see in front of me on the table, I have six candles. And you may have seen these candles back in January and February before the pandemic hit us uh, in earnest. I want to quickly remind you of what these candles mean. This candle means to give drink to the thirsty. This candle means to feed the hungry. Both drink and food are necessary for our bodies to be healthy. This candle reminds us to care for the sick and the vulnerable. And this candle reminds us to welcome the stranger. And if you've experienced being welcomed, being given a, a big hug when you come home from school, or if you've experienced being taken care of, whether it's in the hospital or whether it's when you stayed home from school sick with your parents, you know that that keeps your heart healthy. We need welcome and we need care in order to keep our hearts healthy. This candle says to visit the imprisoned and this candle says to clothe the naked. And it is hard to think when you don't have people with you and when you feel vulnerable. And so both clothing and visitors, people coming through your life, they're necessary to keep your minds healthy. Jesus commands us, as Christians, to do all of these for people that we meet. It's because Jesus, in his love, has given us love and health and well-being. And we're called to pass that along to others, to their bodies, to their hearts, and to their minds. All of these are necessary for us to be healthy. So let us, with God's love, share the health we have with others. I want you to be able to do that in your families and with anybody you see this week. Please bow your heads, fold your hands, and close your eyes, and let's pray. Please repeat after me. Dear God, Dear God thank you for loving us. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for giving us. Thank you for giving us. Food and water. Food and water. Love and comfort. Love and comfort. Welcome and visitors. Welcome and visitors. And help us to remember. And help us to remember. 
that we can give those things, that we can give those things to, people around us. to people around us. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Let us pray. Gracious God, we come to worship carrying with us the concerns of the world, the worries on our hearts, and the burdens that have become too heavy for us to carry. In the light of your word, reveal to us that which truly matters, those things that we need to expose in order that healing might happen, and the next step that will take us closer to our Lord. Amen. This morning's first lesson comes to us from the book of Ephesians, chapter 1, verses 15 through 23. I am reading from the Common English Bible. Let us hear the word of God. Since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all God's people, This is the reason that I don't stop giving thanks to God for you when I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, will give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation that makes God known to you. I pray that the eyes of your heart will have enough light to see what is the hope of God's call, what is the richness of God's glorious inheritance among believers, and what is overwhelming greatness of God's power that is working among us believers. This power is conferred by the energy of God's powerful strength. God's power was at work in Christ when God raised him from the dead and sat him at God's right side in the heavens. Far above every ruler and authority and power and angelic power, any power that might be named not only now but in the future. God put everything under Christ's feet and made him head of everything in the church, which is his body. His body, the church, is the fullness of Christ who fills everything in every way. Keep these words in your heart. The Lord is our God, the Lord alone. Thanks be to God. This year has been rough, 
really quite brutal if you want to be honest about it. it. It's hard to reconcile the total number of hardships that we've all encountered in such a short period of time. And, and trying to list them only makes it feel all the more overwhelming. Faced with the discouragements of this year and throughout the, the many months, from time to time, we've heard from comedians, maybe even some of our friends, about how this is the apocalypse, that this is the, the end of the world, that the sky is falling and the end is near. All of us over the last year, in some way, have grieved a certain loss of community. We've grieved certain freedoms that we once enjoyed. We've grieved having some societal access that has kept us apart from others and from pursuing a, 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 the, the happiness of being out and about. And all of that has taken a toll on our mental and our spiritual health. All of us in some way have, have, have envisioned what life is going to be like on the other side of the pandemic. And we, we, we have waited, we, we continue to wait with bated breath for the hope of, of just a, a morsel of good news. We, we get that, that notification on our phone, bing, and we check the phone. Is there good news today? Is there, is there good news about the vaccine? Has there been a breakthrough? And then we see, we hear the da 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 That's probably not the sound they used, but back in the days before my time, that was the news. That was the breaking news sign. And, it, it, and, and there on the screen, the media, it flashes that red banner along the lower third of the screen, advising us that, that something important has just happened. Something's just coming into the news studio. <gasps> but just like last time, and the time before that, and the time before that, for the last seven months, it's not a formal declaration that the pandemic is over. And so we wait, and we wait, and we wait, and we wait for good news to break through. Well, Friends, sisters, and brothers in the family of Christ, I have got some good news to share today. The good news is, is that there is going to come a day when indeed Jesus the Christ will come again and formally bring an end to all of this waiting, bring an end to all of this hardship and all of the discouragement that we experience in life. There will be a day, believe it or not, when the Hill Country Community Ministries will formally close their doors and never have to feed the hungry again. There will be a day when the living waters for the, for the world can shut down their operations and never again have to train and equip volunteers for the providing of clean water and needy areas throughout the developing world. There will be a day when the Austin Resource Center for the Homeless is going to have one of the best going out of business parties and churches will not have to welcome strangers onto their properties on freezing cold nights so that home homeless can sleep on our floors, there will be a day when faithful volunteers of the Salvation Army won't have to stand outside of grocery stores ringing their bells, ding, 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 asking for our leftover pocket change because they are serving those who need clothing and dignity. That will be no more. There will be a day when, when Doctors Without Borders and the CDC will be disbanded because the sick will be healed and the fear of, of deadly diseases like COVID-19 will be no more. There will come a day when this congregation can say, well done, volunteers of the Letters of Hope writing ministry. All of you who, who have been writing these letters to the imprisoned, well done. Guess what? There's no more. They have all been set free, and our letting, letter writing ministry has fulfilled its purpose. I have got great good news. There will come a day when the words of Julian of Norwich will ring true. Julian of Norwich who says, all shall be well, and all manner of things shall be well. And while that day 
may very well be today. Maybe it won't. Maybe it'll be tomorrow. Maybe it'll be next week or next year. Maybe it will be in some lifetime that is well beyond ours. In the meantime, we wait with hope. We don't know when Christ is going to return to make all manner of things well. But in the meantime, we wait with bated breath, not for hope of good news, but we wait with hope, believing and knowing that that day, the day that Jesus the Christ promised us, that day is going to come. Take it to the bank. It's a guarantee. And the question for us as we are waiting, the question for us is what then shall we do in the meantime? How shall we let our hope in Jesus the Christ govern over our lives, guide our decision-making process on this day and every day until it comes again and reigns forever? What then shall we do in the meantime? Our second reading today comes from the gospel according to Matthew, chapter 25, verses 31 through 46. I'm reading from the Common English Bible. Hear now the word of God. Now when the human one comes in his majesty and all his angels are with him, he will sit on his majestic throne. All the nations will be gathered in front of him and he will separate them from each other just as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right side, but the goats he will put on his left. And then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who will receive good things from my father, inherit the kingdom that was prepared for you before the world began. I was hungry, and you gave me food to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothes. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then those who are righteous will reply to him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you a drink? When did we see you as a stranger and welcome you or naked and give you clothes to wear? When did we see you sick or in prison and visit you? And then the king will reply to them, I assure you that when you have done it for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you have done it for me. And then he will say to those on his left, Get away from me, you who will receive terrible things. Go into the unending fire that has been prepared for the devil and his angels. I was hungry, and you didn't give me food to eat. I was thirsty, and you didn't give me anything to drink. I was a stranger, and you didn't welcome me. I was naked, and you didn't give me clothes to wear. I was sick and in prison, and you didn't visit me. And then they will reply, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and didn't do anything to help you? And then he will answer, I assure you that when you haven't done it for one of the least of these, you haven't done it for me. And they will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous ones will go into eternal life God's word is a lamp to our feet and a light into our path. This is the word of a God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Almighty God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you and in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Way back yonder, way back in the olden days... In January, 11 months ago, the Outreach Commission of our church launched a five-year service strategy based on these six acts of righteousness that Jesus describes in Matthew 25. Feed the hungry, give drink to the thirsty, welcome the stranger, clothe the naked, visit the sick, and 
to visit the imprisoned. Joel and I and a couple of other preachers, we launched a sermon series digging into these acts so that we as a, as a, as a community of believers, that we might turn our attention away from ourselves and out beyond the bounds of our congregation through a series of rapid response actions. And the plans, the plans that we laid out to implement this strategy, well, they got derailed along the way because of the pandemic, which was really quite disappointing for what we had arranged and prepared. However, while the plans had been derailed, the vision, the vision of this service strategy has not changed. We have remained tethered to that future. We have remained tethered to a goal, to a purpose And because of our dogged pursuit of that vision that has been cast and laid out before us, when the pandemic struck and as we endured these many long, arduous months, it is keeping that vision in front of us in our line of sight. That has been what has empowered us to make our adjustments appropriately and accordingly whenever these curveballs came our way. Yes, sure, it is, it is not how we planned, and that is how life goes. But it is this community of followers, those who put their faith in Jesus, those who are keeping that vision in front of them, they haven't given up. This body of believers hasn't been overcome by the dread and overcome by the doom and gloom of the latest breaking news alerts on our phones or on the TV. The latest news alerts that are being peddled by the the heralds of horrors. Keeping a sharp eye on the vision that is cast for us. Keeping a sharp eye on the promise of a day when good news will bust out all over the world is the way in which every one of us will let hope, the hope that Christ teaches, spring eternal. Believing that, that really believing and letting that vision and that purpose give shape to our lives and to direct and to guide our actions. Buckle up, friends. Let me tell you, that's how we steer into the storm. That's how we swerve past those potholes in the road. That is how we glorify God and enjoy God forever. Amen? Amen. We stay focused on where God has called us, where Christ is leading us. Now, that being said, we're still here. And let us consider for a moment something in particular that Jesus says in this passage that has become a declaration of who we are and what we are all about as a body of believers. Jesus says, I assure you that when you have done it for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you have done it for me. There's a story of Mother Teresa in Calcutta when she was doing her ministry and her labor for the Lord there that uh, there was a reporter that was following her around for a few days to document some of of what he observed. And, And on this one occasion of following her around, there Mother Teresa was tending to the horrible wounds of one of the lepers in the community and the, the reporter seeing this looked on with great disgust and, 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 and said that, you know, I wouldn't do that for a million dollars. Basically saying, I wouldn't do what you're doing. I wouldn't touch the, the, the yuckiness or the grossness of this leper for a million dollars. You wouldn't get me to do it. And Mother Teresa, without flinching, without looking up, without giving it much thought, kept tending to the wounds of the leper and said to him, Neither would I. It's as if she said, you're right. You couldn't pay me to do 
what I've been commanded to do. You couldn't pay me to do what I'm doing for the least of these because I love them and they are my family. They have been entrusted to me by Jesus the Christ and I to them. Neither would I, she said, rebutting and turning her back away from all of the things that the world teaches us. Take care of yourself. Stay away from the icky. Serve yourself. Stay away from the gross. Fear what's ahead of us. Don't worry about everybody else. Neither would I, she said. And in such a simple response to that reporter, she captures the very essence of what Jesus is teaching his disciples, what Jesus is teaching you and is teaching me. The courage to respond the way in which she did, the courage for disciples to to faithfully go out into this world, I believe is built upon the very notion that every single one of us has been entrusted into the care of every single one of us. Not just those who, who are in our immediate circles, not just those who are members of the clubs that we are in, not just those who owe us favors, Pastor Joel, not just those who share the same skin color that I have, but every single person in this world has been entrusted to us to feed, to give drink, to welcome, to clothe, to cure, and to visit. And even, and maybe especially even, the ones that we may call enemy. The ones that are really hard to love. The limits of our compassion, the limits of our care, our mercy, our love, and our tenderness should know no bounds Because our Christ has entrusted us with each other and to care for each other every single day until he comes again. And the good news is he will come again. That is his promise and that is is our vision, our vision which we must always remain tethered to so that we do not lose our way while we wait for his return. And so do we, do we as Christ followers, do we accept this calling as Mother Teresa accepted the calling? Or do we, like the reporter in Calcutta, do we fail to understand what it means to be entrusted with each other? I am entrusted to you, you are entrusted to me. Now, I'd be the first to admit that I am no Mother Teresa. And from what I have read about her and learned about her, she may be the first to tell you the same thing. Because what does it matter how outstandingly righteous, how how pure and holy one is when the person who's standing right in front of you or the person who's on the other side of town or the the people who are on the other side of the world are hungry, thirsty, alienated, naked, sick, and imprisoned. What matters is how being tethered to that glorious vision of Christ's return fills us with hope and that hope inspires us to live as Christ lived and to serve as Christ served and to love as Christ loved. That's what matters. At the beginning and at the end of every single day until he returns again, we have been entrusted to take up the mantle of Christ's mission and ministry in this world and service to each other and to all people in the world, no exceptions. The joy of this responsibility should cause us to, to, should cause us to be guided in our decision-making process, not because of, of what's convenient or not because of what's alignment where God is calling us. May the vision of that day, that day that we all wait for with hope, may the vision of that day when all manner of things shall be well, 
renew our hope every single day. May the vision of that day inspire us to breathe every breath of our body with hope. And may our actions as we go out and we pivot from the pews and into the world beyond the boundaries of our property, may our actions in service to others reflect the very depth of trust that God has placed in each and every single one of us. May it be so. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, when did we see you hungry? When did we see you thirsty? When did we welcome you or clothe you or take care of you or visit you? Have we ignored your claim upon our time our attention, and our resources? Have we failed to live into the trust that you have placed into us? Help us to know. Open our eyes and melt our hearts. Enlighten our understanding. Let us see you in the world in which we are living to welcome you as our sister, to welcome you and to receive you as our, as our brother and to serve you this day now and always as our Lord with the very family you acknowledge as your own, the poor, the stranger, the sick, and the prisoner. In the name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. Friends, we are united by a common faith in Jesus the Christ. Claiming God's promises again and again, we remember God's gracious love for us, and we recommit ourselves to the joyful life that is shared together in Christ. Therefore, let us affirm our faith using the words printed on the screen. Let us answer, church, what do you believe? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Friends, as we respond to God's call on our lives, there are many actions we can take. But there is one action we must take, and that's to bow before God in prayer. The busier and more chaotic our lives feel, the more we need to carve out this time for speaking with and listening to God. So let us practice this posture of prayer together this morning. And as a specific prayer focus this week, we'll pray for newlyweds, for long marriages, and for those who've experienced the pain of divorce. Let us pray. God, whose giving knows no ending from your rich and endless store. Almighty God, thank you for the gifts you offer us. We adore you. And as we prepare for a holiday during which the only purpose is to give thanks, we have so much to thank you for. Thank you for a church community that stays strong even through a pandemic. Thank you for friends and relatives, especially those who aren't able to share a meal with us this Thanksgiving. Thank you for the gift of marriage, specifically for the relationships of newlyweds, those with long marriages, and those who've endured divorce. 
We also thank you, Lord, for the gift of singleness, for those blessed with this gift, as well as those who feel cursed by it. Lord, you reign over our church, you reign over our hearts, and you reign over the world. We are thankful for your love. Nature's wonder, Jesus' wisdom, costly cross, graves, shattered door. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, thank you for the ways you took on flesh, becoming like one of us. You joined us in our pain, our hurt, and our need. In sharing our pain, you lament with us for deliverance. And so be with us as we weather the COVID pandemic. Thank you for the good news of two vaccines, each having 90% or better effectiveness. Help our national government, along with governments abroad, to tackle the necessary logistics to produce and to deliver the vaccine to every resident. Lord, you also know the pain of natural disasters, so we ask for your presence with all those who continue to suffer from hurricanes, like many in Nicaragua, Honduras, and Guatemala, who were all hit terribly by Hurricane Iota. Be with all who suffer in body or in spirit, and remind us how you care deeply for the oppressed. We are thankful for your love. Gifted by you, we turn to you, offering up ourselves in praise. Holy Spirit of God, who moves in our hearts and calls us to serve, we're thankful for your presence. Continue to make us instruments of your peace, not by avoiding conflicts around the Thanksgiving table, but by caring enough about what we believe to disagree while still loving the people we disagree with. The peace that you bring, that true shalom, doesn't exist in the absence of disagreement. It doesn't exist in uniformity. It does exist in the presence of committing to love even those with whom we disagree, committing to unity and peace. Please give us the strength and courage to follow your guidance, speaking bravely while loving deeply. Holy Spirit, move within our hearts, guiding us as we celebrate Thanksgiving differently this year. Connect us with friends and family in love. Keep us safe in body and spirit. We are thankful for your love. Thankful song shall rise forever, gracious donor of our days. We ask that you would hear our prayers, O God, in the name of Jesus Christ, who dwells with you and the Holy Spirit in eternal glory, and who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning. My name is David Cook. I'm an elder, and I serve on the Building and Grounds Committee. Come before God with gifts and offerings that reflect your joy and gratitude for God's grace and goodness. Come before God with praise and worship, joining with all the saints as we present to God with gladness a portion of all that God has entrusted us to steward. 
With joy, let us offer to God the gifts of our time, talent, and money. Let us pray. Gracious God, may these gifts be used to feed the hungry and clothe the naked, to bring medicine to the sick and provide hospice bed for the dying, to offer hope to those who thirst for in their lives and to bring friendship to those who sit in jail cells. May these gifts bring your kingdom to everyone who longs for its presence in every circumstance, we pray. Amen.
Friends, would you please join with me in our charge using the words on the screen. Let us say to each other and charge each other saying, go now into God's world to serve members of Christ's family by feeding the hungry, giving drink to the thirsty, welcoming the stranger, clothing the naked, caring for the vulnerable, and visiting the imprisoned. Dear friends, the good news is that Christ will return again. There will be a day when all of the hardships will come to an end. There will be a day when we will have discouragements no more. Maybe it's today. Maybe it's tomorrow. Maybe it's in a lifetime that's beyond, or it's beyond ours. But until that day, we wait with hope because God has entrusted us to live this day caring for each other, carrying on the ministry of Jesus the Christ. So let us remember that on this day, Christ goes ahead of us to lead us on the way, that he goes behind us to encourage us, above us to bless us, beneath us to support us, next to us to befriend us, and within us to empower us so that we may keep a sharp Focus on the vision that has been cast before us that we may live with joy, being filled with hope. May it be so on this day now and forever. Amen.